in my family who carry the BRCA gene, all of them have had cancer. She calls it the family curse. All down to one mutated gene. I would never kind of forgive myself if I had this knowledge. I knew my family history. I knew what it could do to me and I didn't act upon it. It's a cancer curse that this young woman is on a mission to fight. But how much does she know of her own family history right here in New Zealand? We've been able to track down some of your family members. Mm. Would you be prepared to talk to them? Crystal Barter is a cancer activist, but she's come to New Zealand for a very personal reason. No. Her nan is sick, time is precious, and she's here as a special surprise. So we're going to hop in the car and we're going to go to Nan's and surprise her. Despite living on different sides of the Tasman, Crystal's Kiwi connection is strong. Her mum, grandmother and husband are all New Zealanders. I think she's going to cry. I think you'll cry. <laughs> so you were born in Australia, but you've certainly got Kiwi connections. My mum and my, my nan and my husband say you're 50-50. But it's not just New Zealand that these women have in common. They all share another link too, breast cancer. My great-grandma Annie was 68 when she died. My nan was diagnosed at 44 and my mum was 36. That's the gene that's been passed on to me. So it has never skipped a generation. Take a look back in Crystal's family line and the genetic link is unmistakable. Many in her family, both men and women, share the BRCA gene mutation. The BRCA gene is a cancer-fighting gene when it's mutated, it doesn't work, significantly increasing the chances of prostate, breast and ovarian cancer. Mum! Got a present for you. Hey, Mum. Yeah. <laughs> a nice man. <laughs> Crystal's grandmother Val beat cancer in her 40s, but now it's back. This time on her tongue. Oh! <laughs> oh, Grandma! <laughs> Oh, I never thought this was going to happen. I wouldn't leave you now. Oh, darling. We've always been together and all. We'll get through this one too. <laughs> Val is facing yet another major surgery to fight cancer. Hi, I love my nanny more than anything else. After being diagnosed with breast cancer in her 40s, she had a mastectomy. That's the other one. Oh, goodness. Her daughter Julie's diagnosis came in her 30s and she too had the life-saving surgery. <laughs> and Crystal was just 25 when both her breasts were removed. I would lie saying that it was an easy decision because it's not natural for any 25-year-old woman to wake up one day and say, right, I'm going to have my breasts removed today. Five years ago, Crystal was offered a genetic test to see if she carried the mutated BRCA gene. There was a 50% chance it had been passed down to her. It had. I looked at the doctor and I said, take them now. With a 65% chance of developing breast cancer, Crystal chose preventative surgery. I had a pretty lousy day today. It's the second day after my operation. It's a long process. I had to have my breasts removed. Day five, so I've still had my dressings changed today. Had to have them slowly expanded. Then after three months, had another surgery to have implants put in. Um, and then they didn't, one twisted and flipped and went under my arm after a few months. So I had to go back and get another set put in and I got bigger this time and they're really good. Do your breasts look normal? They've got no nipples. But kind of, I don't know if your viewers would want to know, but my nipples were just, they'd been breastfed to hungry boys, so I was kind of over them, to tell you the truth. And I actually like them better than the ones that I had before. It was from her hospital bed that Crystal decided women just like her needed more information about the BRCA gene. 
Pincope gives much needed support and information to high risk women. So she started a charity called Pink Hope and her family's story is told in a recently released book. But when the Hollywood A-lister Angelina Jolie had the same surgery as Crystal, her cause was suddenly making international headlines. All it took was the most famous woman in the world to carry the same gene and to have the same surgery that people kind of didn't say BRCA what. They were like, oh, BRCA, the same gene that Angelina's got. And I'm like, yes, that's it. And she just changed the world for families like mine in that one moment. Fish and chips. Can't you smell it? It smells so good. Tonight, it's a Kiwi tradition for Crystal. And we'll have some chips for five people, please. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. <laughs> Oh, it's been a long time since I've done this. Three generations all affected by the BRCA gene. But as for the next generation, Crystal's own kids, it's not yet known whether they too will carry the mutated gene. Lovely to have you here. Thank you. They'll take the test when they're old enough to decide. If they don't carry the gene, it stops in its tracks, just like it has for Crystal's brother. About a year ago, my brother had his genetic test and he came back negative. So he doesn't carry it and therefore his baby girl won't carry the gene? Absolutely. So it's pretty amazing to hold her and to feel that it's ended with her on his side of the family. Crystal can trace the gene through at least five generations, but she's lost touch with her distant relatives. Has BRCA affected their lives? Do they even know about the gene? We did some investigating and what we found was surprising. Now, we've been able to track down some of your family members. Would you be prepared to talk to them? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because it's so easy to lose touch with extended family and yeah, I've never met them before. We've arranged a meeting for Crystal and her distant Kiwi cousins. How are you feeling? I've got big goosebumps. <laughs> Even though they've never met, they're connected by blood. Blood that may contain the faulty gene. Hi! Hi Crystal! Hello! Okay! And this is Hi! Nikki. Hello! Oh, I wish my nan and mum were here. She's meeting her third cousin, Nikki, and her mum, Debbie. I'd love to sit down and kind of hear a bit about you guys. Yeah. Once they get talking, the family link is clear. Do you kind of know about the family history of breast and ovarian cancer or it's never really been um, openly I'm... discussed, really? Well, it wasn't openly discussed with me. Mm. I wasn't actually told that my mum was sick when I was mm. young. She died of cancer at 41 when I was 14 mm. years old. Mm. And was it breast or ovarian? Breast, okay. yeah. And then her yeah. oldest sister, Auntie yeah. Margaret, died within a year or two mm. years in my memory. Meeting them both and hearing their story and it felt like my life in reverse. And it was really surreal. Despite Debbie's mum and aunts dying of cancer, she's chosen not to get tested. You don't think you'll ever have testing? Or? I chose not to know. If I've yeah, the really? Yeah, I just, that's how I work. Mm. I'm. You know. That's so interesting because yeah. I've been the total opposite. Yeah. And you might not have the gene. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. In my head, I don't want to get the yeah. results because I know what I think and I don't want it to be the case. Um, yeah, yeah. The girls share lunch and their stories. Crystal opens up about her own battle with the gene. So, gosh, about five years ago, I had a preventative double mastectomy at 25. Oh, okay. It wasn't until I had my breast removed that I was like, the first, the first dream that I had was growing old. Oh, wow. I just felt like I'd never get there. Yeah, I felt like that for a very yeah. long time. And, and I did, and I will, and I'm having my ovaries removed kind of in the next few months, and then I get on with my life. Because you might not carry it. Do you understand you're that? Like, like it's a 50 yeah, And you chat. are the first person that yeah. I've spoken to that, <laughs> that knows that they carry yeah. it. 
and you look completely sane. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fine. Oh, I've got three I, kids. I thought it just yeah. might break me, but I no. don't think it will. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. hearing all of this, Debbie, is it made you think a little bit differently about finding out? Really? Absolutely. Really? Oh. <laughs> yeah. You gotta do it for your kids, don't you? <laughs> Crystal's story has now touched one more family, her own. How was that for you? A bit of a surprise, eh? Oh, it was so not what I expected on my way to go home. When Deb said that more than likely she will go and get the gene tests, I just felt, oh my gosh, like I've been spending my whole life, you know, scared of cancer and now being able to turn it around and help people. What better way than helping my own family?